Welcome back to the channel guys, this is Stories from the Jail House, we talk about everything jail related here. Um, big thank you to everyone that subscribed to my channel, I really appreciate it, I appreciate all you guys and um, if it wasn't for you guys I wouldn't be doing this. So, um, if you've not been here before, I'm someone that spent 11 years of my life in and out some of the toughest prisons in England, you know, I started that journey when I was um, 15 years old and I stopped it at 27 and I stopped that stopped it I just had enough and it wasn't for me it fucking weren't for me but let's talk about surviving your first night in jail now I want other people's um, stories from when they survived their first night and be real right because there's not no big man talk here because it's fucking terrifying so I remember getting put on the Reliance van, you know, the van that takes you to prison. And I remember thinking, fucking, that's small, yeah? And there wasn't even a cushion on the seat. It was just like, you know, plastic. So I sat on there and, you know, I'm looking out the window, looking at all the countryside and I'm seeing magpies. I don't want to look at them. I think, oh my God, it's bad luck. Am I going to get beaten up? Am I going to get raped? Am I going to, um, you know, am I going to get bullied? You know, I'm thinking about all these things. I'm thinking, I'm not going to let anyone bully me. I'm thinking that. I'm thinking, I don't care if I get beaten up. I'm not going to let anyone bully me. I'm thinking of all these things. But I don't know what I'll do yet. No one does until you're put in that position. So, I remember being on the van and the hardened, like, you know, inmates. The inmates that have been in there a while were talking between themselves. No one really talked to me. And when they did, they were shocked how I spoke because I was well spoken. And I'll tell you the first thing that really shocked me when I went to prison was white boys talking black. I'd never heard it. I'd never seen white boys talking black. And it was a shock. You know, to, uh, you know I knew black boys talk black. You know, that's their culture. But to hear white boys talking like, yo, blood, yo, come here. I just thought, wow. Like, you know... That was, a sh that was a shocker. That was my first big shock, was to, to hear that. And so anyway, you sat on the van, they call you up. So you go upstairs and they ask for your name, your next to kin, what you in for, uh, do you feel suicidal? And then they put you in a room with other inmates and you're all talking between yourselves or just asking. They're just nosy, most of them. And then you go and see a doctor he asks you if you're suicidal, have you got any suicidal thoughts, do you cut yourself, you know, asking you all this sort of stuff. And I didn't feel suicidal, you know. I didn't fucking want to be there, but I didn't feel suicidal. I felt a bit scared. And then they put you back into another room with all the other inmates. And then they, I remember I was starving as well because I hadn't eaten all day. And then they give you this food. I remember pulling the fucking plastic back on this microwave fucking meal. And it was fish, chips and fucking garden peas. I fucking ate garden peas. But in the end, I'll eat anything now, but you know. So anyway, so I eat it. And well, I don't eat, I pick at it. And all the other inmates are like, yo, can I have your fish blood? Yeah, so I was just like, yeah, yeah I'll take it. And then you sat there for a couple of hours and then they, they call you and you get your bed in and you're walking on the wing now. And as you're walking towards the wing, you, you're shitting yourself because you don't know what's coming. And I remember going on the wing and the cleaners were all out and they're like, yo, where are you from, blood? And when I told them where I was from, they didn't have a fucking clue where it was because it was outside London. Remember, I'm in Feltham, right? So anywhere outside London means that you don't exist in, the, in, in fucking London. People are from London. They're still like that now, right? But so anyway, I remember, you know, my first instant, my first, and I had another thing. I thought, they're fucking rude cunts because they didn't say, can I have this? They didn't say, excuse me, or, or it was like, yo, can, can I give me that? Give me this, give me that, give me this, you know, and I thought, fucking rude cunts, man, but I didn't have the guts to fucking say it to them, you know, and I remember thinking, fucking, these black boys are massive, yeah, and obviously, it, they'd all been training and that in the gym, I hadn't, you know, and I remember walking into my cell, and I remember the door just going, bam, and I thought, wow, I'm in fucking jail, and I didn't have a radio then, there was no such thing as tellies, I just sat on my bed, and people kept coming to my door, 
asking me, can I have this? Can I fucking have that? Can I have this? Did you get a smoker's pack? Did you get this? Did you get that? Can I fucking have this? Can I have that? Where are you from? With you know, and I tell you what, they were shocked of. Yeah, is all my tattoos because I had proper tattoos because I, I I went and stayed with a a tattooist and I learned to tattoo it like when I was on the run. So they were shocked because you know they had all shitty Indian ink tattoos. I had like fucking sleeves and that done. And they were like, fucking hell, mate, where'd you get all your tattoos from? They were like, absolutely gobsmacked by that. And then I remember when the lights went off and then people would get called to the door, you'd hear people singing and all that sort of shit. And I remember when they called me that to the door asking me to sing. And I thought, I ain't doing it. Bollocks. Yeah, and they're like, you're fucking dead in the morning. And I just thought, well, all right, so what? I, I'm going to get fucking beaten up, yeah? And... I couldn't sleep all night, so I got up, I started shadow boxing, and yeah, I was just fucking absolutely fucking shitting myself. And so, the best thing to survive the first night is just to keep your fucking mouth shut. Try not to get into it with anybody because you get some inmates that come in, they'll be at their door, giving it the big and fucking swearing, you know, causing grief. They don't survive. The best thing to do is just try and go under the radar. Go under the radar and try and work out who's who before you fucking start, you know, getting yourself into stuff you can't fucking, you know, write in checks your body can't fucking cash. So, survive your first night in prison on your own. You know, don't get me wrong, suicide crosses everyone's mind. Everybody's. Cross mind when I was up for a big, big jail sentence. Didn't cross mind when I was that when I was a YO. I didn't I understand that then, because I didn't lose anything. Not you know, I didn't have a wife or kids. You know, so that's when a lot of men commit suicide when they lose a lot of stuff. So surviving your first night in jail, I would say, remember that you do get out, yeah, and remember that, you know. Suicide is a long-term fix for a short-term problem. Anyway, guys, I didn't want to get too deep. That was my my take on surviving your first night in prison. You let me know in the comment section how you survived your first night, but that was mine. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Until I see you in the next one, thanks, and I'll see you next time.